Hey, Luke, how are you doing today there? Doing great. How are you doing, Mark? Not too bad there. Where are you at? I'm in Rio de Janeiro. I'm in a suburb of Rio called Nilopolis. It's on the edge of the city right before it cuts off against the mountains. It's got a population of about 200,000 people. Wow. Yeah, so we've got great chatting it here. We're going to get to the, uh, uh, the membership uh, part of it in a bit, but just wanted to let us know about how you came to be where you are right now. You're down in Brazil, maybe a bit of, a, of that journey since you started uh, attending at Mountain View and how things have uh, progressed in that journey so far. Yeah, I'm happy to speak to that. Before I came to Mountain View, before COVID started, I was within a few days of going down to Brazil to join some missions teams and to begin, begin a new life as a missionary down here. COVID started, my flights were canceled and then led to a series of events, which would eventually bring me to Mountain View Church in Whitehorse, where I'm going to get to know everybody. And while there, I spent time there getting involved with everybody, but always waiting for an opportunity to get down here to Brazil. In January, I saw a small window open up with Brazilian air travel opening, and then between Canadian air travel closing, I took a small window opportunity and jumped and came down here. And I really came down here with no plan. I just saw a, a window to come down and jump through it. Immediately upon arrival, my tickets were canceled in Canada, shut down to come back. And since the, uh, I've arrived here, I've been studying Portuguese, trying to experience the culture, learn the culture. It's quite a challenge. And to get involved as much as I can, usually with language barrier um, hindering me to get involved as much as I can with any church I get involved with. I started off in Sao Paulo, capital of Brazil. Sorry, not the capital. It's the biggest city, not the capital. And it's huge. It's, um, the whole metro is about 36 million people, like uh -huh. or, little, or 35 million. It's 50 kilometers wide, but it's got more people than Canada. It's, it's massive. I started off there and got, uh, I preached part of our Habakkuk series in a Baptist church there that I was fellowshipping with. I then left Sao Paulo to come to Rio. And that was, uh, I started off along the coast in a tourist area. I was new to the area and you know, needed to put safety above everything and got to know the area. And I'm pretty comfortable now. So now I've moved inland to the edge of the city where this is more like real brazil it's this place called nilopolis it's not it's dangerous my neighborhood's not uh I tell my father today it's not dangerous but i think most people would be terrified to walk around where i walk around now that it's uh it's it's not rich by any standard right it's, it's not i don't feel in danger ever but it's definitely a whole different world than suburban white horse with the you know the landscape lawns and everything you know motorcycles cars and uh horses on the street and everything uh but here i've made a lot of uh, relationships with people and friends i mean what, I, what happened was i visited this city just for a week and i had found myself speaking more portuguese and talking to more people than i had really in my in many months and right. i thought why well, even though this isn't really a tourist area, it's not, it's not very glamorous. I have to come here. So I packed up everything and just, well, again, no real plan just came to this kind of rough part. I mean, to give you an example, when I first came here, I told my landlord I was going to Nilopolis. I disappeared for a few days. I thought I had died because it's Nilopolis. And they wonder what, so when I showed back up at the house, I thought, whoa, whoa, you're still alive. Um, wow. So yeah, well, that's, it's, you know, it's like it's not a dangerous place, but it's also not far from being a tourist area. So uh, I'm sure I'm enjoying it. It's an adventure, uh, and so I fellowship here with a little Methodist church where I've been attending. I preach there once with a translator. Uh, I'm trying to study Portuguese as much as I can. I've struggled to find a teacher. It was a cultural uh, jump I can't make where I try and I hunt around for teachers and no one will teach me. Everyone offers me free lessons and never gives me free lessons. So there's something I'm, I'm missing out on. So I'm trying to hire a teacher. I haven't been able to, that's what I've been doing, studying Portuguese, trying to get by here in Brazil and get involved in as much as I can with the language barrier permitting. My Portuguese is getting better, especially as I've come here to this new city. I speak a lot more Portuguese every day. I use it. It's increasing. In general, my time here, I've been in communication with 
missionaries in Portugal. And I think this time in Brazil will have been a great opportunity to have got comfortable speaking Portuguese and living in a Portuguese country. I've been, I've been trying to be very sensitive to God to where I could fit in here and minister. There's uh, lots of different types of ministries, of course, to be involved in, but I mean, everywhere I go, I've been offering to just get as much as I can. There's a, a missions team, uh, a few missions teams going to a certain island of uh, Portugal called Madeira, in okay. the Atlantic Ocean. Right. And two missionaries, James Pace and Jason Murphitt, and they've recently begun planting churches there. It's an island that's almost entirely Catholic with low evangel- uh, evangelization. It's very little going on outside. Um, there's the Catholic church there. Right. And I think it might be a great opportunity to do something for the Lord. Uh, so right now, I won't be immediately going there, but getting things. Everything I'm doing now is in preparation to join them in Madeira, in Portugal. Okay. So that might just mean more buckling down and if I can really get a professional teacher to really help my Portuguese to prepare for that, that's where I'm, that's where I'm at now. Right. And, and how far off do you think that might be? Is that, uh... it still might be in the months. I thought it might be very sooner. Things have come right. up and it might be late. Yeah. Are you still uh, working with the fellowship with regard to a mission, like being yeah. attached to that? Yes, and I'm still in constant communication with Fellowship International, right. looking to work with them. That's still pending, though. There's still ongoing dialogue. Yeah, good. Anything else happening in your world down there? Uh, yeah, well, I want to speak to one thing, too, that people in Mountain View is how much I've appreciated everyone reaching out to me while I'm down here, yeah. whether texting me, emailing me, whatever kind of message you send me. It's been very encouraging. I didn't come here much of a plan. I just come here to for the Lord, and it's been quite the adventure. There's been good times and lonely times, sure. So it's been quite an encouragement to receive um, uh, shout outs or emails from people. Yeah, that the emails I've received and all the messages really had a real major effect on me. It really did. That I've been part of Mountain View for a while, but not an official member. And all the messages from the people and all the I guess you could say care I've been given from even back when Whitehorse right. and support, emotional support really showed me that I did have a church family back in Whitehorse. Oh, that's good. To and hear. yeah. And it got me thinking that, you know, we think about what have I accomplished here in Brazil? I haven't really accomplished much in terms of me leaving a dent on Brazil spiritually, but in many ways, this, my experience here has changed me and how I've adventured around trying to serve the Lord, learning to trust God, or I've seen things that have grown my faith. But also just it's built our relationship between you know me and Mountain View Church. Right. And sometimes you think of God's providence, how he works. In many ways, God has used this missions trip to increase Mountain View. Right. That has brought us closer together. Yeah. And so that I'd really appreciate everyone reaching out. It hasn't been insignificant. It has meant a lot to me. And anyone else who wishes to contact me, don't feel shy. I'm always available. Just can get my contact information and call me or email me and we can talk. Yeah, that's great to hear there, Luke. Yeah, probably it's uh, in some day you might look back and it was just a time of, of preparation and readying it for, uh, for what's ahead of you. So great to hear you're uh, working hard on uh, the cultural, the language and trying to find a, a good teacher to fit, make that fit better. And, uh, and we'll just keep praying that the Lord will guide you as you uh, move forward in that journey. Um, so that's great to hear about the attachment you have with us. Uh, I mean, we got to know you a fair bit while you were here and those of us who stayed in touch have continued to, you know, find out what's going on in your world. And we've been able to have a bit of a chat today. And one of the purposes, of course, of the call is, uh, you've applied for membership and the elders have recommended you. I'm just going to go through the covenant. I'll read it. It's a reminder for, for all of us as, as members here of what we've uh, covenanted and agreed to do as uh, the Lord enables us. It states in our covenant that I will, through the Holy Spirit, walk together with my brothers and sisters in Christian love and fellowship. 
I will exercise faithfully the spiritual gifts entrusted to me, strive for the advancement of the gospel through biblical discipleship and evangelism, faithfully attend Mountain View Church and submit myself to its discipline, contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of Mountain View Church, its ministries and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. I also purpose by the grace of God, to maintain regular Bible reading and prayer, to actively share my Christian faith with family, friends, and others as opportunity allows or offers, to remember my fellow Christians in prayer, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy of speech inside and outside the Christian community, and to be slow to take offense and always ready to seek reconciliation. And further, I intend through Christ to walk as a reflection of him in the world, avoiding anything that will cause my brother or sister to stumble, to be just in my dealings and exemplary in my lifestyle, to avoid all gossip, backbiting, and anger, and to protect the good name of a fellow Christian wherever possible. Having been led to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, and on profession of my faith and full assurance of my salvation, and having been baptized scripturally by immersion, I do now and in the presence of God most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with Mountain View Church as loyal member. And we heartily welcome you as a new member to Mountain View Church. Thank you so much, uh, Luke, for your service, and we look forward to what uh, the Lord has for you in the future, and we'll continue to Pray for you as you're out on the mission field and, and as the Lord continues to lead in your life. Let's just uh, have a short prayer. Lord, we thank you for Luke, his commitment to our church here in Whitehorse and always far away. Uh, we feel so very connected to him, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. And we just uh, pray that you would guide him for the needs that he has, for his desire to seek uh, to improve his language skills, his cultural knowledge and to have a teacher in that area, provide that, we pray, and bring him to the place you have for him in the uh, right time, Father. Thank you for him, and uh, bless him as he's joined with us as a member of Mountain View Church. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.